still uh, we're discussing Nigeria's Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed's claim that Jack Dorsey and Twitter are liable for the losses the nation incurred uh, during the NSAS protest. Well, we're now joined by Professor Fidelis Auditor, uh, Queen's Council and Senior Advocate of Nigeria. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I, I believe you listened to uh, Daniel Boala's submission on you know uh, the developments now first of all i'd like to ask you can nigeria really prove a uh, threat to the nation's corporate existence based on uh, the allegations against uh, twitter and um, of course the nigerian government has given a condition or one of the conditions you know to lift the ban on what it says is a suspension is is that the firm must be registered in nigeria as a business concern as well as, of course, other social media platforms. Uh, what are your thoughts? Um, well, thank you. In relation to your first question, which is the liability of Jack Dorsey and Twitter to Nigeria, it's um, difficult to see the basis of any such claim. As I understand what uh, Mr. Lai Mohammed is saying, he has suggested that Jack Dorsey, the founder of Twitter, did three acts which individually and collectively constitute wrongdoing and that Twitter is somehow vicariously liable for the acts of Mr. Jack Dorsey. Uh, so what I'd like to do is just look at the three acts or actions which Lai Mohammed relies on. The first, he says, is that uh, Jack Dorsey uh, raised some funds through bitcoins to sponsor the protest, the NSA protests of last year. Secondly, he says that Jack Dorsey retweeted some posts by some coalitions which were sympathetic to the NSA's protests. And finally, he says that uh, Jack Dorsey launched an emoji which gave greater visibility to the NSAS protest on the microblogging uh, site. Now, it's clear to me that individually and collectively, those three acts do not constitute any form of wrongdoing at all. Um, as you must be aware, many Nigerians donated to the NSAS movement. I'm not aware of anyone who is pursued any of them for donating money to support the NSAS protests. Um, secondly, to retweet a post by itself uh, is not a thought that I'm aware of. Neither is it a thought to launch an emoji to give uh, some additional prominence or greater visibility to the NSAS protests on the uh, Twitter site. So the primary issue for Nigeria and those advising it is whether anything that Jack Dorsey has done constitutes a tort at all. Because unless Jack Dorsey has committed a tort, the question whether Twitter is liable cannot really arise. And in my view, I have seen nothing that Jack Twitter did based at least on what Lai Mohammed has said, which constitutes thoughts or any form of wrongdoing. And of course, one must put this in the context of the fact that as Nigerians, everyone has a constitutional right to protest. It's uh, guaranteed by Section 39 of the Nigerian Constitution, 1999, as well as by the African Charter on Human Rights Act, which is scheduled, which has scheduled to it the African Charter on Human Rights. So really the claim appears to be hopeless, at least on the basis of the facts that we know about. Now in relation we to the second ago, point, with, I... Uh, Daniel Boala, who said that, uh, I, I, did, I brought up the issue of the fact that Twitter has had a running battle about, with about 60 nations all over the world, and then presently is having an issue with India and then he pointed out that the difference between other countries and Nigeria is that Dose is showing a kind of personal interest, a staking part. Uh, what's your sense of that? And uh, 
what you, why you think that Dorse could be doing that? Because the federal government, of course, talks about destabilizing uh, the nation. Um, I'm not aware why uh, Jack Dorsey is showing particular interest in Nigeria. In fact, I'm not even sure what Jack Dorsey's relationship is with Twitter, other than the fact that he's the founder. I don't know, for example, whether he's involved in the running, the day-to-day -day running of Twitter. If his relationship is simply as founder, then that's a relationship based on shareholding. I'm not aware of any circumstance where a company would become liable for the acts of a shareholder. So one needs to, I think, analyze a little bit more closely the facts and matters said to give rise to a Twitter liability. As I understand it, in order to make someone vicariously liable, you have to satisfy, first of all, a relationship requirement, and secondly, um, a connection requirement. So in relation to relationship, you have to show that the person is an employee or has a relationship very close to an employee, such as members of a clergy who are not technically uh, employed by the church, but they have a relationship which is very close to an employment one. In those circumstances, you say, well, All the right. relationship of employer or quiz, uh, exists. Okay. But in relation to connection, it's not even clear that anything that Jack Dorsey has done can be said to have been done in the course of conducting Twitter business. All right. Uh, so much has been said about the long-term economic impact for the 40 million or so uh, Nigerians who actually uh, use Twitter. 20 percent of that number actually uh, use Twitter for, you know, doing their business. 18 percent use it for job hunting and 45 percent of uh, those uh, actually use it well, uh, unemployed, uh, you know, youth. Now, let's talk about the possibility of having a class action against the Nigerian government. Is that a possibility? And uh, if, uh, you know, that's possible, what then uh, can Nigerians who, uh, whose businesses, their livelihoods have been lost, you know, through this ban, what can they do? They should sue the federal government and Mr. Lai Mohammed. And they should sue them for intentional interference with their business relationships. So if someone has a business relationship with Twitter and is able to conduct his or her own business on Twitter, the government's action in deliberately banning uh, Twitter, which itself is wrongful, uh, might in certain circumstances give the Twitter user a cause of action against the government. And I think uh, governments need to behave more responsibly uh, and to distinguish matters of personal legal from what is in the collective public interest. The, the, the foreign minister, uh, Geoffrey Onyama, after discussions with EU, US, Canada, and Ireland, uh, said that the objective of the ban actually was to advocate responsible use of the platform that would not destabilize the peace and unity of the country. And also, do they need to register in Nigeria for the ban to be lifted? I'm not aware that Twitter is carrying on business in Nigeria. Um, <laughs> Twitter is a platform similar to LinkedIn and such platforms. It's very difficult to see that by itself, by making available a platform which can be accessed remotely, the person carries on business in every country where the platform can be, ac can be accessed. I think that that is not correct as a matter of legal analysis. And there may be other acts or other facts and matters of which I'm unaware that the federal government relies on in its contention that Twitter is carrying on business in Nigeria. Um, but the consequences of carrying on business in Nigeria are prescribed by law and those consequences do not include suspension or ban. The company so the that government wants has them to come and carry on business and in, Nigeria. in Nigeria. Register here. That's yeah. what they are saying. Thank you so much, uh, Fidelis Auditor there.